Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. All right, today's video is on the long-awaited results of NHTSA's in, uh, investigation with the 2.7 EcoBoost that, if you're following us from the Bronco community, you know that there was a few Broncos that had failed engines early on, and now we know it's the 3.0 EcoBoost, and there's other vehicles involved, so let's get started. To uh, the uh, vehicles affected were Bronco, F-150, Edge, Lincoln Nautilus, and Aviator with the 2.7 and 3.0 EcoBoost. It looks like a total potential, engines with potential issues are potentially affected, were 90,736. So that's what it looks like the recalls will be to that many vehicles. Estimated percentage with the defect is 1% or less. Um, if you... I have a I have another bit of information over here that I'm going to try to add these together and say that if the 1% of 907 is accurate, it looks like the bad engines have been found for the most part. All right, so let's go through. I don't have all the manufacturing dates for all the models or numbers, but I do have the Ford numbers here, uh, not Lincoln. And so it looks like that from May 1st, 2021, to October 30th, 2021, 15,835 Ford Broncos were affected. 47,719 F-150s built between May 1st, 2021 and October 31st, 2021 were affected. And the last number I have for Ford here was 23,000, or excuse me, 2,366 Ford Edge vehicles built between May 10th and October 29th. So roughly between May 1st and the end of October, October 31st, um, vehicles with the 2.7 or 3.0 EcoBoost were affected. Now it looks like that it was a manufacturing process that made the metal uh, more brittle on the intake valves. And where they said it was breaking was kind of interesting. So if you look at the metal being more brittle and you think it can't handle a lot of force, it looks like the valves were breaking in the keeper area, which is going to be at the top of the valve stem at the finger follower, which takes the place of a rocker arm. And that's what the camshaft presses in to press on top of the valve. So there's a lot of force being applied to that valve stem in that keeper area. So it sounds to me like, and I'm only guessing here because I have no knowledge of this. It looks like the valve, which goes through a lot of abuse and beating in the cylinder head, which is where the valve seats. There's excessive heat there. There's the opening and closing and the closing of it where it seats. There's a lot of impact there, but it looks like the failure happened at the valve keeper area. And they said it was a machining process. So I'm wondering if something that cuts the groove into the valve changed the temperature of the valve to the point that it did harden it or make it more brittle. Uh, maybe that's what the issue was. And the fact it was the intake and not and the exhaust tells me that maybe it's a different machining process. Maybe the the keeper gap, uh, the, the the groove grooves in the valves, there's going to be more than one, uh, whether it's two or three, I don't know, but at least two. And I wonder if it's a different size. And so therefore a different machine does the intake valve versus exhaust. And that's why you only have the intake valves. I don't know. I have no knowledge. I'm just guessing at this. So it looks like the engineering of the valve was right. The manufacturing fell off. And, you know, I am partial to Ford. Full disclosure, I like Ford Motor Company. I like their products. Um, I can tell you the numbers of vehicles that are built. It takes a while for vehicles to be built, shipped, driven enough for this to happen. And for Ford to have found this problem as fast as they did, that was pretty amazing. I mean, because this can get out of control like Toyota's issue, 104,000 engines. I think all of those, if I'm not mistaken, please correct me if I'm wrong. All of those engines have to be replaced because of metal uh, shavings, manufacturing debris, they call it, metal shavings in critical parts that then is circulating it through the uh, oiling system and main bearings in that case was going crazy. So I've got to say that I am impressed with finding the issue, figuring out what it was, and correcting it pretty fast. However, if you're part of the 90,000 affected, I'm sure you're probably aggravated. And on October 7th of 24 this year, you're going to start to get the letters that telling you if you're one of the chosen or not. Um, I did put my VIN number in NHTSA's website. It did not come up anything engine related in either my 21 or my 22 Bronco. My 22 Bronco was built in January of 22nd. It's safe. 
based on this report, even though it's a 22, uh, it's the manufacturing date, I think, is the critical part. My 21, however, was built September 3rd of 21. So that one is in this time frame. And I just don't know if NHTSA's website's not updated with the, all the VIN, all the data yet, uh, because this report was completed on October 23rd. This is just recently. Uh, October 31st is when it went out, at least. That's when I found it in a press release. And we're doing this video here today, and I'm shocked there's not a lot of other videos talking about it. So we now know that there was um, the different affected, the Bronco F-150 Edge, Lincoln uh, Nautilus, and Aviator. Now, I said earlier that was interesting about the nature of the issue with brittle metal in the intake valve and where it was breaking, so around the keeper area. But here's the potential good news for the rest of us. And I and I'm always try to see the positive. It looks like between as of August 9th um, or as of August 9th, 24, Ford is aware of 811 global warranty claims confirmed or suspected to be related to the fractured intake valves with report dates ranging from February 13th, 21 to June 3rd, 24. So if that's the case and the 1% is an accurate number, it looks like there's only a few out there that haven't met their maker yet. So I would say this is if you are driving, you're north of 20,000 miles, you use it, you drive it, you enjoy it. I wouldn't hesitate to keep on doing it. On January 25th, 2022, global CCRG opened an investigation into the 21 model year uh, vehicles affected. And so that's when the actual investigation started. So it's been going on a while. And um, it looks like this thing ended here in what, August of 24, this investigation. So it's been quick to be reported. I just wanted to drop this video. If there's any questions, answer them in, or ask them in the comments below. If you have anything to add, by the way, comment below. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, greatly uh, appreciate everyone that watches our information. And hopefully if you're seeing this for the first time, you'll, uh, you'll join us. So if you were affected, if you had an engine fail, I know it's it's aggravating. I get that. I am not trying to overshadow that whatsoever. What is the test? The test is going to be a cycle test. I'm not a automotive service technician. However, I'm a hobby engine builder. And if you ask me, what is that cycle? There's drive cycles. People look at time, you know, hours on the engine and mileage on the engine. Um, uh, on off-roading, somebody that off-roads their Bronco quite a bit is going to have more hours than mileage. If you use your, if you drive it on the road and you use the auto start stop feature, you keep it on, uh, you're going to have, you know, less hours per mile than some of us who turn that feature off. So there's, there's going to be a range of vehicles out there. Um, but I would say that this test is going to be a, a combination of RPMs and time. So it'll probably take it up to a certain RPM, pretty high, I would imagine. And for a certain length of time to really stress and test that valve train, uh, and if it passes that, there may be some other drive, you know, drive tests and things to put it under a little bit more torque versus just a, a, a free spinning engine. Um, does that affect it at all? At least on the valve train issue, the RPMs, the revolutions, is what really works on a, a intake uh, on a valve train in general. So, um, Hey, any Ford technicians out there or any technicians at all, you know, what a actual, what, um, is detailed into a cycle test. I'd love to know in the comments below, but I'll tell you what I think it is. And, uh, they're just going to wind it up. And if it holds, it holds. So anyway, hopefully this is going to be good news and rest your nerves. I'm not worried one bit. And, um, uh, well, you know, we'll take it as we take it. So anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you have, if you uh, haven't already, please subscribe to our channel, hit that thumbs up for me and hit the bell icon for all notifications. So you'll know that when we go live, if we ever go live again, I don't know. Uh, when we drop a video, we have a premiere. Uh, it'd be very awesome for you to do that. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Hope this helps. See ya.